In this video, I'm going to share the building process that I use in my van conversion, which took it looking like this to this. I'm also going to break down the cost that went into it and sharing how long it also took. So remember to smash that like button down below and let's get into it. What's going on you guys? If you're new to the channel, my name is Brad. And before we get started, I just want to put a quick disclaimer explaining that this is just a process that I use for my van build and is certainly not the be all end all when it comes to building out a van. And as the saying goes, there is more than one way to skin a cat. So what worked for me might not have worked for you, but I've broken the build down into six steps to make it a little bit easier to follow. But let's get started with number one. Now, in my opinion, this first step is by far the most important. For me, I personally took about two to three months to plan out my entire van build. I started by researching the types of vans that were out there and which type of van was gonna be good for the situation I wanted it for. And then finding out what the price points were for new vans and used vans. After deciding that I wanted to use a cargo van, I spent most of my free time just kind of planning out what I wanted to have in the van. What was a priority for me? And I started to draw up mock designs on what it could look like while also watching YouTube videos and doing more research on what other people have done to get more ideas. Also, while drawing up different designs, I had to take into consideration what different types of products and hardware I wanted to put into my van build. That way I knew where to leave space for the certain things that I wanted. All the aspects of the planning and researching step are very important to help the process of the next steps down the line. So if you do most of the grunt work in the planning stage, it's going to make the building process and the layout just go so much smoother along your van conversion because you're not going to start writing, for example, a paper without doing any research or planning beforehand because you're just going to be sitting there and you're going to get nothing done. So if you have a plan set in place, then all you have to do is follow the plan and just remember, it's not going to go exactly the way you think. So make sure you're flexible. And the best part about this step is that it is absolutely free and it costs you nothing. And for the second step, I like to think of it as just the basics. And for me, that was buying the van and simply fixing anything that was wrong with it. Now, because I bought my van used, the first thing I did was go over the mechanics and make sure everything was in working order. That's checking things like the electrical system, like the battery and the lights. Also checking the fluids in the van, making sure the filters weren't full. Also looking for any leaks that might have been there. Checking the brakes, anything like that. Now, I did have to change some of the fluids and also repair some of the brakes. So there was additional costs in that. And some of the door handles were broken off, which also had to be replaced. Once all the mechanical issues were dealt with and fixed, I was able to strip down the interior of the van and give it a nice deep clean inside and out, as well as being able to identify any of the rust spots or anything else that needed anything cosmetic done to the van, which I could deal with next. With a little bit of elbow grease, I was able to remove most of the rust and repaint and primer those spots, as well as filling in any unwanted holes with silicone. And after that, I just started cutting holes in the van for the things I knew I was going to need. So such as the fan and the ceiling, as well as the solar cables where those were going to come in. All this work is pretty basic and unexciting. However, it is extremely important because you don't want to start building a van conversion in a van that is going to quickly become unreliable and break down on you. And just remember, if the cosmetics aren't looking good before you start building the interior of your van and there's a little bit of rust, that's going to build into a bigger problem over time. So you want to deal with it while you have access to it. However, this section or this step ended up costing me around $2,500 and the van was the most expensive, which was $2,000. If you do the mechanics yourself, it costs considerably less, and I'm fortunate enough to have a brother who is a mechanic, so I got parts at a discount. But now on to the next step. So this is when things start to get interesting by building out the foundation of the van. Things like the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. For me, I started out with the floor and started with the framework, then added polystyrene boards between the frames and put Reflectix over top and put plywood, which I later painted white on top of that. Once the floor was finished, I used an adhesive spray to attach polystyrene boards to the ceiling, as well as using a spray foam insulation to fill in any of the gaps. 
While this phone was drying, I started to run the wires and the cables for some of the lights and the other electronics. And I made sure to test the lights before installing the quarter inch pine sheets to the ceiling. That way I can have the wires running through the holes that I wanted the lights to go in. For the walls, I used a rock wool insulation, which I tucked just behind the framework, along with the wires and cables. Then I used a Reflectix as a vapor barrier and had it all sealed in with aluminum tape. Once that was all in place, I was able to put the custom cut pine sheets up against the wall and screw them into place. Now the last part of the foundation is just the doors. And for the sliding door, I used the same tactic as the ceiling. I used the spray adhesive to attach polystyrene boards to the top panels, and then just put felt over top of those. And for the bottom, I left the inside of the door hollow and used Reflectix and just more felt over top of that. As for the back door, I filled in the back bottom with the leftover rock wool, put a vapor barrier over top of that with more Reflectix, and then the wood paneling went on top of that. As for the windows, they're just covered with a black vinyl and corrugated board, and they're not insulated at all. For me, the foundation was really important to get done correctly and the way I wanted it, because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to access any of these areas easily once I get proceed with the van build. And this area or step ended up costing me around $1,300 after adding up all the materials. But let's move on to the fun part. But before we get into the next step, I just wanna quickly remind you to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps up my little channel here on YouTube. And I appreciate each and every one of you for doing that. And as a thank you, I just wanna show you this really cute photo to brighten up your day. Now on with the video. When starting to build the furniture, a lot of it was trial and error. And not everything worked out exactly as I had envisioned it. But because I was flexible, it worked out better in some cases. And because of all the planning I had done in the first step, I knew exactly what the vision was going to look like, so all I simply had to do was build it. I basically started building from the ground up. And we started with the back, building out the storage system and having the malamine boards come up to where the wheel wells were, finding the right height for the bed after you're gonna be sitting on it, as well as using all the proper measurements for the different items and materials I was gonna put in the van, such as having the proper measurements for the bed width and the bed length, as well as making the water cabinet big enough to hold two containers at a friction fit. As for the other counters, everything was just kind of, like I said, built from the ground up. After a lot of trial and error, things started to take shape. Started to put the countertops in, fitting the right doors, adding a little bit of the hardware that we knew we were gonna use just to make sure it was actually going to work. But once the base was all finished, it was time to install the overhead storage. And that was a little bit more tricky. So a lot of brackets and things to hold it up in place were essential to making it stay in, in the same spot. And because of all the main structures were mostly square, that left a lot of odd shapes and gaps in the sides and the edges of the van. So the last part of this step was used to fill in all those awkward spaces and making sure to leave enough space for any wires or hardware that I was gonna put into it next. And overall, this entire step, adding everything up, all the materials, it uh, came out to roughly $800. Adding the hardware is one of those things that I was just kind of doing throughout the entire build, not just specifically in this one step. As I was acquiring different things that I knew I was going to need, I would be incorporating them into the build as I got them. However, once you get to a certain point in the build where we are now, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to move forward to the final stages without getting all of the hardware and the electrical system and the water system all honed and dialed in before moving forward. The first thing I started with was the electrical system, and I wanted to make sure I tested everything out before I installed it into place. Things like the USB ports, the light switches, the water pump, and so on. All of these things, I had to make sure they were working before I connected them to the fuse box with the positive and negative. And then I used an isolator switch between the fuse box and the battery. And then I wired in the cables for the solar panels as well to make sure that was ready to go when I installed the solar panels a little bit later. 
The second thing I had to do was finish up the water system and it was pretty easy to finish up. All I had to do was install the sink and the countertop with I used an elbow drain that's used for a boat to run the hose that goes down to the bottom of the van which drains the sink out to the road. And the water tanks I was able to just slide them into place because I had already measured to make sure that they were going to fit perfectly. And it was just as simple as cutting some water tubing to link to the water pump that would make the faucet pull from those tanks. And as for the rest of the hardware that I didn't really add yet, things like the hinges, the door handles, the tile backsplash, the curtains, the seat swivel, the floor finisher, all of these things, they were just added as I had got them. Uh, same with the roof rack and the solar panels. I would just add those as I got them and wired all the solar panels in to make sure it would finish off the electrical system and it was in working order. After getting everything polished in my van build, it, this step cost me approximately $1,800 after adding everything up. Now that my project was nearly complete, there was just a few final touches that I needed to do before I moved into the van. The first thing was, was adding wood wax to the walls and the ceiling. That way it would bring out more of the color in the wood as well as protecting the material over time. The next thing I did was measure the bed and get the dimensions for the custom cut foam piece. And this step I also was able to check for functionality of the van and make sure everything was working as I intended it to. And if it wasn't working as I wanted it to, I was able to revise or add something that might have been missing. And the last thing that I needed to make sure the van was complete was to buy the fridge. Now the fridge was the most expensive part of the build other than the van itself, which is why I waited to the end to get it. But I've been really happy with the investment and I would highly recommend this same fridge if anyone else wanted to get it. Now this last step is one of those ones that's gonna be ongoing. You're always gonna be fixing things or revising things to make it a little bit better for how you want it. You're also gonna be able to personalize the van for you yourself and for your own needs. And for me, this step ended up costing around $2,200 after I added everything up, including the fridge. Now, before I add up the entire cost of this van build and break down how long it took me to do, I just wanna reiterate that this is just the approach that I used and what worked for me might not necessarily work for you. And by breaking my van build down into easy to follow steps, I'm hoping you or anyone else can replicate what I've done a little bit easier. Or if you're just looking for a little bit more structure in your own van build, use these steps as a takeaway in moving forward in that van build. But with all that in mind, I want to move on to the final thoughts in this video. Okay, so how long did this van build actually take to make? It took approximately six months after the initial planning stages. So from when I bought the van to when it was finished was approximately six months. And this was over the course of a fall and a winter here in Canada. So I suspect if it was done in spring and summer, it would have been done a little bit sooner. But at the end of the day, it took around six months. But let's get into the cost breakdown. So adding up all the steps in this van build, it comes to a grand total of approximately $8,600 Canadian, which is equivalent to $6,800 USD. You could definitely do this van build for cheaper if you were looking for recycled materials or used items. However, that's not the approach I wanted to go for. But if you are interested in some of the items that I used in this van build, I'll leave a link in the description section down below, along with a video to the entire tour of the finished van build, if that's something you're interested in. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.